I'm like a broken clock. I understand you're tired of hearing it, but back in January, back in February, I'm the guy screaming, do not buy running backs. In Dynasty, these guys are going to lose value more times than not for a multitude of different reasons. One, including NFL free agency. I mean, even if you don't expect it to be the case, there's always a chance that Taji Spears is replaced by Tony Pollard. There's always the chance that Roshan Johnson is replaced by DeAndre Swift. So you have to dodge that first big bullet where if you bought Taji Spears in January, February, you just got absolutely wrecked. Now, the second thing you're going to notice as we go through the offseason is just the natural mindset that Dynasty Fantasy football players have. That when we go into January, a lot of people are sitting here thinking, oh, okay, yes, I understand. I have to transition more so to the offseason mentality. I have to be thinking long term. But in the back of their minds, they're still sitting there going, oh, okay, I understand that I will have to start scoring fantasy points at some point, right? It's going to matter what these guys are doing this next year at some point. But when we get to March, April, May, June, July, the mindset of the dynasty manager, especially in April, May, June, when we're so far away from football, isn't necessarily what these guys are going to do in the short term. The majority of players in your league are thinking about the long-term outlook for these guys, what they are going to look like three, down, three years down the road. And based off our historical research, we have found that running backs with their ADP typically get cheaper if you are looking at January to April. And then the last thing that we typically say you need to be worried about and why we are not going to start buying running backs until the summer is the NFL draft. Now, this is a little bit different this year, ladies and gentlemen, where typically I would say I want nothing to do with any running back. I'm not really buying any RBs until we get to the summer. This season may be different. You may be able to go buy a few of these players at a discount in April because of how this draft class just isn't scary in the slightest. You look at the guys who have the possibility of going inside the top 100 picks at the running back position. You have Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, Blake Corum, Jalen Wright, Braylon Allen, and maybe Marshawn Lloyd. If you are looking at this list of running backs, yes, Jonathan Brooks has the upside to be a three-down player. Yes, Trey Benson has the upside to be a three-down player. Yes, Jalen Wright has the upside to be a three-down player. A lot of these other guys, if they were to get drafted, it's not that you have to worry about them taking the starting job from someone like James Cook. We'll talk about him later on. But maybe if like Braylon Allen goes to Buffalo, then all of a sudden James Cook is more so in a committee back rather than a pure workhorse. And in years past, there are about seven, eight, nine of those guys that you have to be concerned with, where in this year, you only have about three or four. And for that reason, where we are seeing depressed running back prices now in comparison to where they were in January, this is going to be the first time I'm willing to say, if you want to go out there and buy a few of these running backs, I'm not going to fall you. So we're going to look at the group of guys going into year three. We're going to look at James Cook, Rashad White, Kenneth Walker, and Isaiah Pacheco, Try to come up with some reasonable expectations. Try to come up with which one of these players we should be targeting, which one of these guys that we should be avoiding. And let's look at their real values that you have in fantasy right now. So we're going to be pulling up the community rankings on flogfantasy.com. The community rankings, completely free. You can pull them up whenever you want. So just link in the description, link in the comment section. Also, you can find, of course, all my rankings over there, all the rankings for pretty much everybody you watch on YouTube. Plus, use code FLOCK. You're going to get yours truly to break down your Dynasty team with the podcast and 30% off any sub. Plus, you have our Dynasty team analyzer. You have our Dynasty trade calculator, our Dynasty trade finder, draft guides, pull nine yards over there. But nonetheless, you're looking at Rashad White right now. He's the RB11. Now, let's start with James Cook. James Cook's the RB10. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But even with James Cook being the running back 10 in Dynasty, you are seeing depressed prices as we previously predicted. James Cook right now in a super flex league is currently hovering around the rookie pick 110 in cost. If you're going to go through and map out about what rookie is going to be at the 110, the 111, this range of picks, obviously in a super flex draft, you're going to have the stud quarterbacks already off the board. Um, Caleb's gone. May's gone. Daniel's gone. You're going to have the stud wide receivers already gone. Uh, Marvin's gone. Rome's gone. Neighbors is gone. You're going to have Bowers off as well. And then most likely J.J. McCarthy based off where his draft capital looks to be right now. But after that, after the top eight, it may be a little bit tougher to predict exactly what we should see. 
If you're looking at my rankings, I'm going to be going with like Brian Thomas Jr. Then Adonai Mitchell. But nonetheless, 110, we don't know. It's going to be like Xavier Worthy. It's going to be like Troy Franklin. It's going to be like Keon Coleman. Maybe just maybe a running back sneaks in like Jonathan Brooks. Maybe a Bo Nix gets some great draft capital. You could see him going here as well. But that's not necessarily where the expectations are right this second. So if we were looking at the caliber of prospect that you're getting with the 110, it's not necessarily a, a foundational piece, someone that you can't live without and someone that for sure is going to be a bona fide stuff. He has upside, but we just don't necessarily know. If you look at the depth chart that we have in Buffalo right now, the running backs playing alongside James Cook are going to be Ty Johnson and Darrington Evans. Now, I wasted a few tax squad spots over the years on Darrington Evans. I'll be the first person to admit that, but... Still, nonetheless, running backs that I don't think you have to be worried about. Running backs that I don't necessarily expect to be commanding any type of realistic workload. And what's also interesting with James Cook is we know that this is a running back that is going to be able to see the involvement as a receiver. And if you are looking at the targets available in this offense right now, Stevon Diggs leaving opens up 160 targets. Do I think James Cook turns into Stevon Diggs? Hell no, I don't. But can it bump his target share up 1% to 2%? Yeah, I think that's a possibility. Gabe Davis leaving is leaving 81 targets behind. So you have 240 targets available in Buffalo. Of course, I'm not saying that James Cook's going to get all of these. I'm not saying he's going to get half of them. I'm not saying he's going to get 25% of them. I'm not even saying he's going to get 10% of them. If he goes out there and gets 5%, of that available target share. I mean, let's just do some simple math here. 5% of 240. I mean, I am no mathematician, but this is an additional 12 targets on what James Cook saw this past year of 54. So if you see you say that 54 target mark go up to 66 in a full BBR format, James Cook may end up being one of the better receiving backs that we are seeing in the NFL this season. If you are looking at Cook, the issue is you're not necessarily going to see a ton of touchdown volume, just given the fact that obviously Josh Allen's going to vulture a lot of these at the goal line, but it's already priced in. And we already saw this in years past. You only had two rushing touchdowns from James Cook over the past two seasons. And if we head over to the road of his screen or look at the range of outcomes that you're going to have for James Cook going into this next year. The running backs that have had similar seasons since the year 2000, you had a Ramadre Stevenson in 2022. The next year, not impressive, 12 and a half points per game. You had David Montgomery back in 2021. The next season, whatever, 12 points per game. Um, you had DeMarco Murray back in 2012. The next season, he was at 18 and a half points per game. Ahmad Bradshaw, the next season, he was at 16.2. Matt Forte, the next season, he was at 16.8. Frank Gore, the next season, he was at 16.7. A couple running backs at 12 and 8, and then a running back at 20. So really, if you're looking at the median expectation here for James Cook, this is a running back that you should possibly expect to be hovering around 16 points per game this next season. As that borderline top 12 guy still on his rookie contract, there's not that much downside in investing into it if the price point currently is going to be the 110, 111 in a super flex league. Obviously, if that's a one quarterback format, very different. One quarterback format, you're going up to like the 106 there. But I, I think this is a very reasonable price point if you wanted to go out there and buy James Cook. Now, going over to our next running back in terms of his cost in the community rankings right now, Rashad White is right there next to the 111. Now, one thing I really want to be pointing out with Rashad White out of these year three backs is Rashad White's 25 years old. He's been 25 for a while now. This is very different than what we're going to look at with someone like Kenneth Walker in just one second. But also, with that being said, I mean, Rashad White's a back that arguably had the best season out of any of these guys this past year. I mean, he sees 272 carries. He sees 70 targets out of the backfield as well. So, I mean, you see an absolute workhorse level workload from him. Now, the issue that you're going to have, if we want to point one out, is the fact that while the volume was there, the efficiency was just god-awful for Rashad White. I mean, so far in his NFL career, he's averaged 3.7 yards per carry. I, I don't necessarily expect this to get much, much better anytime soon. I mean, if you look at pretty much any advanced metrics, they, they kind of scream that Rashad White's not a special player. And I don't necessarily think that all of a sudden he turns into a super efficient running back at 25, 26 years old. We've seen that these guys typically peak at 24 and they're not going to be getting much better from that season. And if we go through and look at the situation for Rashad White going forward, 
You still have the target competition. They're the receivers. We don't necessarily know what the quarterback situation is going to be in the long term. I mean, obviously, Baker showed well, but at the same time, there's no Josh Allen in Tampa. If we go over and look at the comps of what we've had with Rashad White since the year 2000, you're looking at Ramadre the next season putting up about 12 points per game. Montgomery putting up about 12. Kamara actually had a similar year back in 2019 at 24 years old. And then the following season, he actually bumped up 25 points per game. Devonta Freeman fell from about 18 down to 15. Lamar Miller fell a bit down to 14. DeMarco Murray went up to 18 and a half. Really, if you are looking at the expected range of outcomes here for Rashad White, it's very similar to what you have with James Cook if you are just looking at the raw numbers. But obviously, like I always want to say, the base expectation is what we look at with the historical data and the raw numbers. We don't in there. You add in your own context. You add in the situation of that player, and you add in what your personal beliefs are with that guy. So if we add in the comp, I mean the look that unlike James Cook averaging five yards per carry over the past two seasons with some better advanced metrics than what you're going to be looking at with Rashad White. White's been a very inefficient running back with Rashad White as well. He doesn't necessarily have the available targets in his offense to continue to expand his role as a receiver as we can project out with James Cook. And the offense shouldn't be as good as what we are expecting in Buffalo. So for those reasons, if I'm having to pick a running back out of this list to buy, I, I'm going to go Cook. Cook's also the younger player. Now, going over to our next guy, I'm kind of surprised to see Kenneth Walker down here. If I had to buy one of these running backs today at these prices, Kenneth Walker is by far and away the option. Now, I want to be on record. I think both Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet are very reasonable prices. I think this is like a Devonta Freeman and Tevin Coleman back in the day. I think you can kind of get away with having both these players starting them. And if either one were to go down, then the other running back immediately turns into a top 10 option with less competition in his backfield. If we're going to be looking at what we have with Kenneth Walker, this is a running back that did get worse going from year one to year two. That's the expectation, right? You, you add in Zach Charbonnet in round two. We know Charbonnet is going to have a role as a receiver, yada, yada, yada. But what's, I don't want to say nice in a way of Zach Charbonnet being there, because obviously Charbonnet being there is going to hurt Kenneth Walker. But, it insulates his value where we really can't see the Kenneth Walker value going anywhere from today, mid-April, to the time we get to August. And there's no downside that's going to happen here unless we get an injury. Because, I mean, if you're looking at what can happen in Tampa in the draft, it wouldn't be the most surprising thing in the world that the Bucs go out there and take Trey Benson. Would it be the most surprising thing in the world that the Bills take Braylon Allen to split the backfield with James? No, that's a possibility, Right. Not saying that those guys would win the starting jobs, but it's going to hurt their respective backfield mates in terms of just their dynasty ADP from where we stand today versus where we stand in a month. Kenneth Walker, you're not having to worry about that because you have Zach Charbonnet there because in back-to-back -back drafts, the Seattle Seahawks have already invested that second round pick into the running back position. I mean, uh, both years. You really don't have to worry about another running back going over to Seattle to hit Kenneth Walker's value. So it's, it's frustrating that Charbonnet hit his value last year. And if you bought Kenneth Walker going into the NFL draft last season, as you should not be buying running backs typically, I just think this year's different with how bad this class is. Obviously you lost. It hurt his production. It's going to continue to, but it's priced in if you're buying now. You're not having to go out there and trade the 105 as you would have had to last offseason before the NFL draft. Now, if you're looking at the community rankings, Kenneth Walker is sitting there at... I mean, anywhere between the 111 and 112. If, if I can sell that pick, if I can sell a Xavier Worthy to go get Kenneth Walker, I think that's honestly a fine move and a, a safe move as well because Charbonnet's there to protect him from any additional value loss from this point. Now, going over to the cheapest running back out of this group, we are going to be looking at Isaiah Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco is being valued as that early second round pick. So if you were to go out there and get Pacheco, you're going to be looking to sell like the 202, the 203 if you were going to do so. And with Pacheco here, this is a running back that also doesn't really have anybody you have to worry for. I mean, this past year, maybe you were saying, well, Mason, maybe McKinnon was going to go out there and have the receiving down roll. They're going to utilize Pacheco in a first and second down. I was worried about it. I thought that was possibly going to happen. But no, that isn't something we have to worry about going into this next season. McKinnon's no longer there. This past year, Pacheco proved himself as a capable receiver. He had 49 targets. And with those 49 targets, he had 44 receptions. A, a ridiculous rate there. I mean, with those 49 targets, he had 244 receiving yards. 
So yards per target, not necessarily phenomenal, but uh, good enough, right? It getting the job done where you can see the Chiefs not necessarily thinking that they have to go out there and have to address the running back position they didn't free agency. If we're looking at historical comps based on what we had with Isaiah Pacheco in this past year's age 24 season, or you had Ramadre, David Montgomery, yet again, looking at about 12 points per game. Volt Lindsay looking at about 12 points per game the next year. Then you had the good comps, Aaron Jones, at about 20 points per game the following season. Which the Aaron Jones comps, interesting, because obviously Aaron Jones, another one of these running backs that didn't really have a lot invested into him in the draft. DeMarco Murray, 18 and a half. Marion Barber, 15 and a half. Rudy Johnson, 15.1. Edgar and James at 21. So, I mean, if you look at the range of outcomes for Pacheco, I think it's another running back that's actually a pretty safe bet. I, I could easily see the Chiefs going out there and adding someone in. But if you're paying a second round price to Pacheco, what happens if this team, say, in round four takes Jalen Wright? Is Pacheco all of a sudden worth less than a second rounder? Maybe, possibly, but not going to be a, a massive, massive L if you are making that move. So across the board, honestly, at these prices where you're either selling an extremely late first round pick in a super flex league or you're selling an early second, I am fine if you want to go out there, if you want to um, take a swing on one of these running backs. Now that we're through free agency, now that you know that they weren't the guys getting DeAndre Swift, Saquon Barkley, or... Um, Tony Pollard added their backfields. Now that you've seen the natural decline that's going to happen during the dynasty offseason, and the fact that maybe the NFL draft isn't as scary as what it's been in years past. But I think that's all I got for you. Appreciate you. Hope you have a great day. And of course, if you want to check out all my dynasty rankings, if you want to check out our dynasty trade calculator, our dynasty team analyzer, our dynasty trade finder. I mean, if you want to go out there and get any of the dynasty rankings or dynasty draft guides for pretty much any of your favorite creators, all in one place, all on flogfantasy.com. Code Flock, you're going to get 30% off any sub. Plus, yours truly will break down your dynasty team in a podcast. But it's all I got for you. Appreciate you. Hope you have a great day and hope we get to see you out with the video tomorrow.